Good afternoon and welcome to Viscount Leisure. My name's Charles and I'm going to take you on a tutorial video around this uh, Adria today just to make sure we understand how everything works and how we attach everything to it. Um, so we start on our way into the caravan here. This is of course our door. Oh, it's held on a rear retainer here which holds the door and stops it flapping around in the wind. Also a split door as well. Okay, so we can use it as a stable door if we want to as well. All right, locking mechanism is up for locking and then down for opening from the inside. We've also got an extra Malenko um, lock here as well, so we can lock the door uh, with a double lock here as well. The key is on your key ring just here. All right. On the outside here, we've got a 240 volt external plug socket. Okay, that means we can power things up in our awning. All right, but bear in mind that's only active when you're plugged in with your mains lead. We have a cupboard underneath the, uh, the seat here, so we can access things from inside the uh, from outside the caravan rather than having to drag them through lock is in the middle and the two push um locks are just on the side there we've got four corner steadies on the van as we can see if we look underneath what that's doing is steady in the van while it's in location all right but what we want to do is level our van using our jockey wheel at the front here okay front to back before we put our steadies down you can see you do have a spirit level here on the front which shows us that we are level front to back but not level left to right here so you may want on in this occasion to put some um some ramps underneath the one side of the wheel you will find most um most sites are level left to right but it may be worth having some leveling wedges with you as well once we know we're level that we like to be level because our fridge will work much better on a level situation we're then in a position to wind down our corner steadies the hand winder is here okay you can see there's a white tube here that goes in we insert that into there and then we can wind the legs down all right but as i say if we try and level with those what we can do is bend them and also damage the floor of our caravan as well so that's why we don't want to do it level on the jockey wheel then put our steadies down into our gas locker here. All right, we know it's our gas locker because we're depicted by that LPG sticker on the front. We are set up for running on propane. I've got my test gas bottle on it at the moment just to make sure that everything's running properly. You will need gas in order to make the van work properly. When we're traveling, we do want to make sure that our bottles are strapped in. Okay, that's very important. And also that our um, gas bottle is switched off. We do that by turning the, um, the screw on the top. But then when we get to site, we want to open that to allow the gas to flow through our tube here into our bulkhead regulator. That will then change the pressure of the gas to the working pressure of the van. This, um, this gas hose here, what we would call our pigtail, screws in on an opposite thread into the bottle. You will need a gas spanner to snip that up with, all right. Um, but that is on a, so it's not lefty loosey, righty tighty. We go the other way round with that one. And then again, to unlock, undo it the other way round as well. But make sure that's nipped up nice and tightly. And then when we get to site, we open our bottle up. You do have your spare tire in here as well, as you can see. All right, and we also have our um, hitch cover and also our waste hose here as well. And I'll show you where that goes in just a minute. Just quickly talking about the front, we will do a full hitch up with you when you pick the van up. All right, um, jockey wheel, handbrake here. It's just push up and down very much like a car. We are running on 13 pin electrics here. All right, so you wanna make sure that your car has that or has, uh, or you have the correct adapter to do so, all right. We also have an Alco hitch head here as well. So you do need to make sure you've got an Alco compatible tow ball. All right, this is slightly different spacing to a normal one. But if you've got any questions with that, do ask us and we can check for you before you tow away to make sure that you are running on the right gear. Um, also, your tow ball needs to be grease free. There must be no grease on it. Okay, so if you use another trailer which is greased, you must make sure you're cleaning that off with brake cleaner. The reason for that is we have hitch head stabilizing pads in this head here, and it likes a nice rough surface to uh, to with, for, to get the friction so it doesn't snake. All right. Um, again, the same if you've got a new tow ball, we want to be making sure we're taking off the uh, the new paint on the ball itself. All right, with some sandpaper. That way, you've got some nice bare metal for those uh, pads to really go to work on. Moving around the van, of course, we've got water coming into the van here. You'll need an Acarola or a waste carrier, um, a water carrier of some description. Your waste, your your pump drops into the barrel here, okay. All the way to the bottom, there it is there, okay. So that drops in, plug it into the side of the van once you've collected your water on site. Push it all the way in and then plug it into the side of the van there using the um, the trigger there to make sure that's clipped in nice and tight. Once that's in there, the are then in a position to start running your pump inside and purging the water system through. So we'll have a look at that shortly. 
two different types of power on the van 12 volt provided from a battery 240 volt power provided by a mains lead all right so you will need both of these things battery and a mains lead okay uh, this is my test battery here my test mains lead all right so that's providing my 12 volt power to the likes of my lights my water pump my fridge panel and things like that if we're running off grid we can just run from our battery okay and the gas will then infill what we else we're using in terms of our boiler and our fridge all right but if we are on site with mains hookup we plug our mains hookup lead into here that will provide us with proper 12 volt uh, 240 volt power into the van okay it does have a little cut out here so we can shut this up when we are on site and lock that closed so that nobody can play around with it this is our boiler flue cover just here, okay? You wanna take that off when you are uh, running on gas, all right? We do need to be able to expel the, um, the gases when it's burning on gas, very much like it on home, at home, all right? But um, just make sure that if you are lighting your boiler on gas, you remove that. Next thing we've got is our toilet, okay? So we've got a, to um, a cassette toilet here, which will collect all the, all the things that go down the toilet, all right? So what we will do is just open this up and have a look. Okay. So, we've got two bits of it here. This one here is for our flush tank, all right? We have a separate tank on board for our flush. The reason for that, we put a pink chemical in there um, to uh, help everything smell nice and also keep everything lubricated inside, all right? Um, so you can see in there, that is our flush water, okay? And then when we flush the toilet, it's got to go somewhere. That goes down into our toilet cassette down here. So we lift the green handle up and we pull the whole unit out and that will slide out. You see it's on wheels and it's got an extendable handle so we can wheel that to our service point on site. Once there, what we do is we quite simply open the arm up, okay? Take the cap off the end, press the green button here. That releases the air pressure inside the unit and then we can empty that unit down the specific um, point on site for toilet waste all right um, once we've done that we want to reprime the unit okay with some blue chemical slightly different what that does is help break everything down um, and keep everything again smelling nice and make it easy when we are emptying our toilet cassette all right you mix that with a bit of water again the instructions are on the box or on the, the box on the bottle again you can buy the blue chemical in the shop as well make sure you are using the correct toilet paper as well um, it doesn't like normal toilet paper all right the caravan stuff breaks down much better and it's easier to um, empty your unit when you need to all right we drop that back into place and that is now all clipped in we also have a um a way of emptying our um of emptying our flush tank here all right so we just undo that and that will um pour everything out we don't want to be leaving anything in the van in terms of water at all even when we're, when we're not using the van it's good practice not to do so we'll talk about a bit more about that so when you're not using your van empty your um toilet flush and also empty your uh, toilet cassette as well all right okay so that's our toilet cassette all right moving around the van we also want to find our waste outlet as well, which we'll have a look for. Okay, around the other side of the van, we've got two corner, um, two grab handles, and also where our number plate goes. So just do bear in mind, you will need a number plate to depict the um, the car that you are driving with. Okay, our waste outlet is just under the van here. All right, just behind the wheel, you can see we've got these two. Um, flaps here which we open up okay we then have our waste master sat here that will collect all of our gray water from the likes of our taps and also um, our shower as well so we've got one coming from the bathroom one coming from the kitchen all right so we plug our waste hose in into our waste master that you'll need to get to lay down here and that will then collect all of your gray water okay and then once that's full you take it to your service point and empty that on site right Coming around here, you can see we've got two vents here. This is our fridge vents, all right? So um, the fridge runs on heat in order to cool. So it pulls the cold air in from the bottom, expels the hot air out from the top. Okay, so nothing you need to do with them, just so that you're aware of what they are um, and what they're there for. Our awning light is also situated up there as well. Right, coming into the van. Once we've plugged everything from the outside, so we've plugged in our mains, we've plugged in our water, we've put our, aqua, our waste master out with our waste hose, so we know what we're doing with that. We then need to come in and start purging the water um, system so that we have water coming to our taps. As it sits at the moment, of course, everything's full of air because we have left our uh, boiler and everything dry. Um, 
because that's just good practice. So what we're going to do is come in, make sure all of our taps are shut. You will have left those open. Uh, I'll explain why later, all right? But make sure that everything is turned off, okay? Including your sink in here, which is hidden as well. Okay. Once you've done that, we then want to close our boiler drain valve. If we look under the seat here, you can see we've got a yellow switch down here, just there. Okay, this is our boiler drain valve. You will find that in the open position, so that's in the upright position like that. Okay, what you want to do is come in, flip that down so it's running uh, along the, uh, the pipe. That will then close that valve so we can start pumping water into the van. All right. Once you've done that, we then want to purge the system. All right, get all the air out of it, replace it with water. So we're going to come to our main panel over here. All right, and we've got our master switch here, so we're going to turn that on. Okay, we're also going to turn on our water pump there as well. Okay, once we've done that, we're then going to start purging that system. So our boiler is situated there, you can see that. We want to fill that up with water. Okay, and then we want it to come to the tap. I've of course already done this with this van, but what we'll do is you come to the tap, turn it over to the hot side, turn the tap on. You'll get a lot of coughing and sputtering. That's why it's pushing all the air out and filling that boiler up with water, okay? Once you get a steady flow of water like that, and it will take a little bit of time, okay, um, you can then shut the tap off. You want to do that in here. You also want to do it in your bathroom as well, okay, and your shower. You want to purge every bit of piping. That way we know that when we come to use our, um, our water, that we have water when we need it. All right, so let's let that drain off. That's the hot leg purged. We then need to do the same to the cold leg. So we turn it to the cold side and we turn that on as well. This won't take as long because we don't have a boiler to fill up. All right, so that will come straight from the aqua oil straight to your um, straight to your uh, straight to your tap. But it will cough and sputter a little bit. Once that's done, then um, we're ready to go. But I say purge it everywhere. Um, that way, there's no air left in the system. Even if you're not going to use the shower, still purge the shower. That way, there's no water trap uh, air trapped in the system. Okay. Um, Okay, once we've done that, we then can purge our gas system. All right, we do that here from our hob. We've turned the gas bottle on in the front locker and we then come and just turn on one of our hobs, hold it down, press the igniter there. Okay, let that, until you've got a nice steady flame as we have there. All right, that way we know that the, there's no air in the gas system either. That will just help when we're trying to run anything else like our boiler or our heater or anything else on gas. Once we've done that, we then want to start getting some hot water into the van. Okay, so what we do is come over to our controls over here. We have two ways of doing this, all right? These two are the ones we're talking about when it comes to hot water. This top one is the electric side of things, all right? So it is boiler EL, so we can run it on not so much power, which is all the way up, off with the electric or on with the electric, and that is the, um, the hottest setting so that will heat it up to about 70 degrees and the other way will heat it up to about 50 degrees okay and that's purely on the electric side the 230 volt two th when you're plugged into mains that's how we can heat the water up in our boiler all right if we are off grid and we don't have access to mains power we can heat that up on the gas side of things so we do that from down here okay um so we can heat it up to 70 degrees Okay, I can now, now I've done that, I can hear that boiler lighting on gas. Okay, or I can have it on 50 degrees, okay, or off. I can also run it with a combination of the both. So if I was having a couple of back-to-back -back showers and wanting that hot water to heat up really quickly, I could run it on full electric and full gas, and that will then really fire that boiler up and, um, and, and work both off the gas side and the electric, okay? Now, I've plugged into mains here, so I know that I can turn my gas off and just purely run it from the electric side alone okay so there we go then we've got our heater all right so we can run it on electric or we can run it on gas from the electric side we do from here okay so we have three settings or four i should say really um you have the zero there which is off okay or we can run it on half a kilowatt of power we can run it on one kilowatt of power or two kilowatts of power depending on what power we have available to us on site okay and then we change the heat by the middle wheel here from one up to nine, all right? You'll soon figure out what works and what doesn't work, okay? Um, but um, but that is how we turn our heating on. It is a blown air system, so you can see all of our vents are down here, all right? And we've got one down there in the bathroom, in the bedroom, all right? So we've got vents everywhere. Okay, again, if we're off grid, we don't have access to mains power, we can heat the van via the gas. We come over to our gas fire over here, all right? now. The way we light this is really quite simple. 
Let me just turn that off a second. Okay. So this is the where we light the gas from. We hold it down and turn it. You'll hear it click and you'll hear it light. Then we look for the pilot light down through there. I'm not sure if it will pick it up on the film, but I can see that from here. And then I can just change the temperature, all right, using the one to five um, round here as well. I can then turn on the fans, okay, to pump that um, air around the system. All right, I can go to manual, okay, automatic or manual, and I can change the fan speed. There we go, you can hear that fans kicking in there. So the heat from here and the fan speed from the other side. We can just put it over onto automatic, okay, and that will then select the fan speed that it thinks it needs to keep the uh, van at the temperature that you require. Now I'm going to turn this off, it's quite warm today, so I don't need any heating on at all. Um, so that's how that all works, all right. Um, let's have a quick look at the front of the... We have our lights here, which are on dimmers, okay, which are touch sensitive by the middle button there. Main lights can all be done from here, where it says main lights, that will turn off all the lights in the van from one switch, as you can see. If we're going out for the day, we don't want to find all the individual light switch, we can just do it from there. 240 volt power socket when we're plugged into mains and we also have our kitchen lights here as well all right on this van as well all the on off switches are opposite to what you would expect so when they look like they're on they're actually off so it's up for on if that makes sense okay uh let's have a quick look around the van see if there's anything else we need to talk about we've got our windows here so we have blinds and we have fly screens okay these do ratchet as well okay and the way we open our um our windows is quite simply we have four locks and these are what we call click clack windows all right so we listen for the click when we push them open and then we let them drop back onto that click if that makes sense so we go up click and let it drop back onto it okay and again there we go click and that will hold open there all right then we want to put them down just take it off the click and it will drop back down again as well. All right. And then we can lock up. You can lock these on a breather setting as well, okay? Um, so, um, you know, just leave them slightly open and just lock them onto the other, into the middle of the two bits here as well. That external lock that we've got um, outside here, you can lock that from the inside as well, all right? So this operates basically as your key, as you can see, so I can, Push that all the way up and lock that in place with the key. Okay, so if I turn that 90 degrees when I was in the van, let's do that as an example, if we shut the door. So we're going to bed at night, we want to be nice and secure, so we lock the van by pushing this one up to the red dot. Okay, we then come to this, turn this 90 degrees, that will unlock it, we can then turn this that has now pushed that lock down in front of the van and then push that, turn that, and that has now locked that in place. So if I then try and open the door from here, I can't because I am locked from the inside. But as I say, if you don't lock this back, you will just be able to lift it up from the outside. So in the morning, what I would do is come, turn that, push this up, and then I can come back out again, all right? So nice bit of security, really. I've also got my, um, fire alarm and my carbon monoxide alarm as well so just make sure they're working which we're pretty happy they are the bed we can see how that pulls out all right these these slats pull all the way out and they meet in the middle and then we drop all of our cushions into place all right so i'm sure you know that already okay so i'm just going to put this back together now into more of a lounge situation Okay, um, so what we do when we do sleep is we do turn these over onto the other side, okay? So you would move this cushion out of the way, these would then drop into the middle and make our uh, bed. The, the bolsters here, I would turn these all the way over and have the bolster on the other side facing the window, that way we've got a nice flat bed going all the way across. Okay. We've also got a coffee table that pulls up here, as you can see, and we've also got two 240 volt power sockets here at the front of the van also. Our reading lights are all individually switched there as well, okay? Um, and we also have our big skylight here as well, which again, opens slightly differently. You open it up and then you have these screws, okay, which hold the window into place. 
Again, these of course have fly screens and they also have blinds as well for when we are at night time so we can black the cabin out, all right. So just unplug those, that blind goes down there and that one goes back, okay. Stereos in here, as you can see, all right. CD player, aux in there as well, so if you can connect our phone to it via a cable. Um, on off button is that source button there. So hold that down to turn it off, hold it down to turn it on, and we can scan through our radio stations, put CDs in, or press the source button to go back to the aux section as well. Let's turn that off, okay. Uh, we've got our TV aerial point here as well, our 12 volt socket, 240 volt socket there as well, and also our um, TV um, bracket there as well. So we can move that all the way out. So when we're watching TV, we can have it out here. So when we're sitting back, it's quite nice. All right. Another power socket there, also some drawers. These are all quite soft clothes, which is quite a nice touch. All right. So that's how that all operates there. Skylight sitting here, the way we open those is we press the button. We pull it down, pull it back again, and we then lock them into place. Must make sure that we're shutting these before we travel. All right, the amount of times you see people going down the old motorway with these open, it happens a fair amount. When we're traveling, we do want to make sure we're keeping all of our lids and everything shut, okay? Um, that is quite important. And in here, you'll see you have a freestanding table, your chopping board, and your uh, draining board as well is all sitting in there for you. Um, Got a microwave in here, okay? Again, 240 volt microwave, so we do need to make sure that we are, are plugged into mains before we try and use this, otherwise it just physically won't work. And what you don't wanna be doing as well is traveling with your microwave plate in here. We will put that in your red book pack there for you, okay, so that you're not in there whilst traveling. The reason I say that is the amount of times we see these smashed on the floor with dents in, your, in the top there as well. Less like it's happening with this one because it is locked in place with that as well, but it's just good practice. Don't travel with your microwave plate in there as well. Right, I've got a, an oven here as well, okay. Um, it is a, a combi oven, uh, so we've got a grill at the top and we have an oven at the bottom. So we can see that the top area shaded here is our grill. So the way we like that is hold it down, like that. There we go, that's that lit there, okay. And then if we want to light our oven, we go the other way. Okay, hold that down, press that, and you can see that lights at the back there. Then we just set our temperature and we're cooking. Just bear in mind, this isn't a domestic oven, so it does take a little bit longer to cook things than it does in a normal oven. Gas isolators are there. If you do need to isolate a certain appliance, shouldn't really need to, but just so that you know where they are if you do need to. Okay, let's talk about the fridge. Thetford three-way fridge, okay, works on gas, works on electric, and works on 12 volt as well, all right? Um, to open it, we have the handle on top. We just open that there and in she is. Lovely and cold in here. We've had this on test. All right, and so is our freezer section. In fact, we did this last night. So yeah, that's all frozen in there. So we're happy that's working nicely. Um, so our on-off button is here. You can see it's on because we have a green light. Okay, so to wake the panel up, we just simply press it and then it gives us a couple of options, all right? Changing the temperature of our fridge is this button here. All right, so very much like our fridge at home, we can change the temperature. We also have different power sources, so we can run it on mains power when we're plugged into mains. So we need that there to show us that. We can also run it on gas, so we need that flame there. That will then light the fridge on gas, and we don't, don't require any power coming from the mains power. The only this this thing here is powered by the battery, the uh, fridge panel. Okay. We can also run it from our car when we're traveling. All right, so I need the battery setting for that, which is that one. It is telling me that it can't do it because we're not plugged into the car at the moment, all right? So if you see it flashing like that, then it means that there's a problem. Um, but what we can do is just put it on A for auto. So that will prefer, choose its preferred power source. If I'm plugged into mains, it will use that. If it loses its mains connection, it will then light it on gas. And if it knows that you're plugged into the car, it will then use it for the car. Bear in mind when you do have it on the car, all right, it's not gonna chill it down, but it will maintain a temperature in there. So you, if you want it cold while you're traveling, you do need to chill it down first and then, um, and then, and then switch it to 12 volt for while you're traveling, all right? So it will maintain that temperature, but won't actually chill it all the way down. Let's get rid of some of this ice. We've got nice hot water, don't we? So we should be able to melt that off nice and quickly. 
Uh, the horse does get hot, as I say, it goes up to 70 degrees, so do be careful, it does get very, very hot indeed. To the point where I can't touch that anymore. So do be very, very careful. I always want to get rid of this ice. There we go, let's make light work of that. Okay. Right. We've got more cupboards and drawers and everything all over the place, so lots of storage in here. In here is our main RCD, as you can see there. So this is for our 240 volt system. Brake is very much like at home when we're plugged into mains. All right. But the main one we want to talk about here is this is our main RCD here. So um, if you're struggling to get power to the van, all right, um, and you think that you don't have 240 volt power even though you're plugged in, this is where we come and test that, all right? So if you can't get your fridge to, to work on mains power or you can't get your, 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 your sockets to work or anything like that, all right, nine times out of 10, it's actually a problem where you're plugged into, not where you are, um, not where you are, um, not with the van, I should say. So if you come and press this button here with a T on it, this little one here, that's the test button. If I press that and nothing happens here, that tells me there's no power coming to this unit, so the problem's where you're plugged into. So you want to check your, your post, they will have a trip switch as well. Um, if I press that and this trips, that tells me I've got power coming to the van. There we go, all right. Um, so if it, doesn't, if it doesn't trip like that, then it's not a problem with your van, it's a problem where you're plugged into. We've got another power socket in there as well, all right, because we also have a TV, could potentially put a TV bracket on here in the bedroom. You can see where the wires can come through and you could plug it in, in here. Right, going to our bedroom. Um, little switch up here for our lights, one on either side, okay. We also have a, a concertina door that you can pull across here as well. And we also have access, un, access underneath our island bed from here as well. All right, so you can see you've got loads of room under there. You can lift it up from either side, but a nice bit of storage under the bed and a nice big bed at that, to be honest with you. Um, right, we've got another power socket down here. It's got a couple of USBs in there as well, so that's, uh, that's useful. Um, wardrobe either side and covers down the bottom. And our coat hangers are in there as well. All right. And again, individual switching reading lights and another switch here for our down light here. Right. I think that's pretty much it for the inside here, okay? You can see we've also got our hooks here as well, so if they're like that, you can just pull those down and turn those into hooks, but if you're not using them, it looks a bit better like that. Um, right, let's, uh, we've been on holiday, we've had a nice time, so let's start shutting our van down as if we, we finished our holiday, okay? So what I'm gonna do is come and turn off my mains power, turn off my water pump. I'm also gonna turn off my fridge because that's on a separate circuit. The reason for that is I may well be using it with my car. I'm not. So I'm going to do that. Um, then we're going to start draining everything down. So we need to find our boiler drain valve, which we know is under here. All right. And we're going to flick that up. Excuse the camera work. Easier done with one hand. All right. That's now dropping all the water down to the ground from the boiler. We'll see that when we're outside. And not forgetting we want to leave all of our taps open. All right. In between hot and cold, which the reason we want to do that is if, one example, we get some freezing weather, Okay, um, if we get freezing weather, um, water expands when it freezes and we can end up damaging taps, splitting taps, damaging pipes, um, and the next time you come to plumb your van up, you'll end up with a leak or water flying everywhere, which isn't what we want. Okay, so if you can make a habit of it, um, that's a really good thing to do. Leave all the taps open, um, drain your toilet down, drain your flush tank down, and uh, then you can't really go too far wrong, if I'm honest, all right? Okay, then what we're gonna do is we are going to disconnect everything from the van. Now you can see all of our water draining down here, so we know that's all coming out nicely. Okay, I'm gonna put my boiler through back on. I'm gonna unplug my mains power. Okay, what you want to be doing is um, unplugging it from your uh, pitch first rather than your van. Basically, you don't want to be walking around with a live wire if you can avoid it. So I always do it the opposite way around so that you're putting it into the live part first. And also, don't leave it, if you are on a drum with this and it's got all wrapped together, don't leave it on the floor all wrapped up. It does draw quite a lot of current, okay? And we can end up melting the cable. So you wanna make sure it's all flaked out, even if it's all underneath the van. Um, that way you can't damage it, all right? I'm then gonna remove my water pump. All right, give that a good shake off. And I'm gonna put this in the front locker for you here. 
You then come in, turn off your gas bottle. In fact, I'm going to remove this one because this is our test bottle here. All right, so I'll take this one out. Then what we want to be doing is um, stowing away our, our aqua rolls, our waste masters and all that kind of thing inside the van, making sure that everything is stowed away nicely. All right. Some people use the showers for this kind of thing, um, but it's up to you what you want to be doing. Okay. Then what we want to do is have a quick look at our motor mover and how that operates, okay? So I'll wind all the, all the handles, all the steadies up and then we'll have a look at that. Okay, now we've done that, we need three things. We need our motor mover engaging tool, we need our isolating key and we need our remote control. All right, so firstly we're going to engage the mover. For that we're going to use our tool here. This is an extendable handle, like that. And you can see we have a sprocket here that we can put that onto. All right. Again, it's easier when you're using two hands. Right, then we're going to push this away from the van. Okay, and we're pushing the roller onto the wheel. So keep your hands out of the way. Okay, and make sure they're all the way over and keep your fingers out of the way of that roller as well. We also want to check they're engaged on both sides. Some movers will engage both together. Some you have to do separately. So let's have a look at this one. Okay, that's engaged, that's good. That means we can do it from either side, which is really useful. Right. Then we need to engage, um, turn our mover on. So you can still see that boiler draining down there, nice hot water coming out of there. So that's obviously doing its job nicely. Okay, now we need to turn the motor mover on. We do that with our red key. That goes in here, just underneath where you were plugged in. Turn, that's now allowing the battery power to go to our motor mover. Then I'm going to grab my remote control. Okay, we're going to turn it on from the side there. Slide that up. I can hear that's now engaged it and you can hear it make a slight noise. So now what I can do is release my handbrake. What I don't want to be doing is releasing my handbrake before I have uh, engaged my motor mover. Otherwise we'll be chasing the caravan down the hill and that's never a good way of doing anything, okay? Um, so you can see from the arrows which way it's going to go, all right? So it's pretty intuitive to be honest with you. Um, and you can pretty much turn it on its own axis. Always moving around, making sure we're not going to hit anything, of course. All right. So that's how that works, all right? And then we do the opposite to turn it off. We turn it off from here, okay? disengage our mover, put our handbrake back on before we disengage our mover, I should say, um, because otherwise if we're on a slope, we're gonna be rolling away. Um, and then we take our key out and that's job done. But uh, any questions when you pick up, we can be here to help. But um, I hope that's been useful and we look forward to seeing you at collection. <laughs>